Hello and welcome to Score Vision Advantage, a podcast where we share the latest happenings on sports tech and fan engagement. Today's episode is yet again one of our short segments, Tech Talk, where we talk about all the different options for sports tech and what what all's happening, I guess, in that realm. Um, it's always done by our director of technology, Ben Norris, who's joining me today. And for today's episode, we are discussing everything that has to do with streaming and choosing a streaming provider. Not to say that we'll cover everything under the sun, but we are going to try to kind of give you a little bit of advice as we know that it is very overwhelming. Um, So our goal today is to share the facts and try to provide you with those options so you can better serve your fan base. All right, let's kick this off. Ben, how's it going today? Not too bad. How are you doing, Ashley? I'm doing good. Great. Um, So this is obviously a really big topic. A lot of our athletic directors, not even to mention our own teams, oftentimes have a lot of questions about what all is entailed in a streaming service and how do you even select a streaming service. Um, We know that there's definitely a lot of options. There's generic providers. There's also sports-specific so I guess first and foremost, what do people need to consider when they're choosing a service? Yeah, it's a it's a huge topic, and yeah, let's we'll try and stay focused <laughs> today just to talk about the providers themselves. I know that that will bleed over into talking a little bit about the hardware and the software and um, and some of the other concerns, but um, I think there we can narrow it down into a few specific things. Like the for one. How are you getting content to that provider, right? So when I'm thinking about that, I'm thinking about are they taking some sort of standard feed from my software or hardware that I've purchased from a third party? Or is there a form of proprietary hardware or software that's necessary to get a stream onto their service? Um, and, And a way to think about this to me is, is it a open infrastructure or a closed infrastructure and there are some advantages of a closed infrastructure in theory meaning like um if they just give me an app and i hit one button and it starts streaming and that stuff goes everywhere i want without me having to configure anything maybe that is the dream um I think a lot of us have done enough of this to know that that rarely happens but uh but it definitely there are some advantages and then um, then you've got something like you, you said one of the generic providers. Well, to me, the generic providers, the big names, YouTube, Twitch, you know, Vimeo, where they aren't necessarily sports specific, but they are set up to take inputs from everywhere. Everybody knows who they are. There's no like brand anxiety for a parent who's going to look at YouTube. Obviously, they're, they're going to go there. So, um, so there are a lot of advantages t- to that as well. So, um, and then I think you need to talk a little bit about, uh, kind of tied in with that is the, uh, the sports specific providers. Um, there might be some of these that are national. I know that there's a lot of regional players in this space. One of those that, um, we're fa- fairly familiar with is uh, Strive TV. I know that they're around the area. They also happen to be a partner of ours on the AV side. So, um, but but they're a big player just in the local states around our headquarters. So, um, there are some advantages there. They tend to come with some extra features that you don't necessarily get by default with with mm-hmm. YouTube. Um, one of those being something like a over the top. Uh, functionality, which is kind of the industry term for, do they have a Roku channel or or an app that I can put on my Apple TV? So s- some of that stuff starts showing up when you're doing the more sports specific stuff. I also just love Strive because they also have an education component to their services. Yeah, they miss. So just a little plug for that. <laughs> they were kind of a, a no brainer when they approached us to to partner on the AV side because you know we love the the education aspect and that's one of the big things they've done is they've gone around their territory and talked to the schools, not just about what you need to do to get a stream available, but what they can do to teach the kids how to stream. So right. so that's that's really cool. Yeah, I don't mind talking them up a lot. <laughs> yeah. So when you're selecting a service provider and you're having to consider all these different facets, one of them that you just mentioned was how do we get content to the service provider? Um, 
And then the other being, how does a service provider then put that content back out? Or what are the options for then viewing that content from right. the fan's perspective? How yeah. does that vary? Yeah, that's a great point. So, yeah, as I mentioned, some of those services might offer an integrated over-the-top thing that lets you view the th- an event on TV. That's really cool. Um the other would be whether they have their own website. So in, in the case, this is whether the provider has a website where you can go um, to view the stream. Or obviously, if you're talking about YouTube, you just go to YouTube a- and watch it. That's always an option. But then the other question there would become, um, is their player embeddable in another app or in another your website? website? Um, and so we have run into a lot of questions about this. Um, of course, ScoreVision, we have our own fan app. Um, and, and part of what we do is if, if the customer has a working stream, we can embed that in the app. But there's a few caveats there. Like Twitch, if, if you're streaming live to Twitch, I can always take that player and get it back into my web app or into my website or into my phone app. Um, YouTube has that embeddability but they put a little bit of restriction on it and a lot of our smaller schools or schools who are just new to um to streaming started running into this issue where if you don't meet you don't necessarily have to monetize your channel on youtube but if you don't meet the threshold for monetization you can stream to youtube but you can't embed that stream anywhere else the only place anybody's going to be able to watch it live is on youtube um so that is is difficult because YouTube's obviously great because it's free right. um, to stream to, and traffic does have a cost. So we can talk about that later. But like um, one of the things that we've done at Scorevision now to kind of ease this discussion, right? So so say you're streaming to YouTube, oh, but nobody can watch it embedded. They have to wait and watch it later. Um, okay, I'll stream to Twitch. Well, that's great, but then you have the opposite problem. Twitch used to store the um, the recordings of your content for some time, or you could manually mark a video to be stored in Twitch for for some amount of time. As time's gone on, that storage those storage options have kind of gone away. So you stream to Twitch, you can embed it, but you don't have any recording of it after the fact, or you have to manually go in and download that. Um, when Amazon bought Twitch, they did away with the dream scenario. You used to be able to link your Twitch account to your YouTube account and have mm-hmm. it automatically archive over. Well, obviously that didn't meet Amazon's business yeah. <laughs> business requirements, <laughs> so uh, they kind of got rid of that. So what we did at ScoreVision was, hey, we're not interested in taking on YouTube. We're not interested in taking on Twitch or even even some of these more specific sports providers. But what we are interested in is making our customers' experience easier. And so um, some of you might be familiar with the ScoreVision Capture app. Um, we are in beta now with what we call ScoreVision CloudStream. Um, that is a service that its main focus right now is embeddability. Um, it it allows you to have a one button configuration from our software stream to our service and then also simultaneously restream that out to another service as well. So that's kind of one of the things we, we were talking about, like you and I were talking about before we started recording about like what are some of the other intangibles or other things that you might want. Restreaming is is something else to think about. Um, Would that include like, I know a lot of our schools are using NFHS where they're putting that on like their network or Max Prep. I don't know if Max Prep does streaming, but services that are like that, that they're like hosting their stream on. Yeah. So would that be one of those? Yeah. So that that would be the cool thing about um, restreaming. And and I'm not specifically talking about um, ScoreVision here. We we do intend to have that functionality when we launch next year. But Mm -hmm. um, if you have multiple services that you want to stream to either because you're required to stream to one but you want the features of another or you have a mix of features that you get best out of both um some of the streaming services have built-in restreaming functionality where you might have to pay a little extra for that but but you can just turn it on 
or there are restreaming providers where it's a separate service that sits in front of the streaming providers that you've chosen that you want to stream out to and basically splits that stream and sends it out to multiple locations. So there's a couple of advantages of that. Like I said, you can mix and max functionality, but one of the other things you can do um, with that is uh, you when, when you're on site and you're recording and you have to encode that stream and send it up, it helps save on bandwidth. Um, so if you do have multiple places you need to go, you're only incurring the cost um, as far as your school's network or your guest school's network or if you're out at a field using Wi-Fi or if you're using your phone to record. Um, you're only using that upstream once and then it's you're paying for the restreaming services upstream from there to split it out. So there's some technical advantages to it as well as uh, feature advantages. I did not know that. Um, what about the viewing, like viewing the stream after fa after the fact? Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> I know that you mentioned restreaming and then also the uh, the archive. Like, is it yeah. possible to then archive? footage is that a goal that would come out with cloud stream and what does that look like yeah so um i've spoken to a couple different customers where they were asking like how how do we get archive footage and to me i'm like oh well okay well you just stream to youtube then or or that's really a, a function of what provider you're using how much time they save the stream for or or and um how much it how many streams they'll save, how many recordings, um, VODs, whatever you want to call it. Um, but then there's this second question there, which is like, oh, yeah, but I want archive that doesn't – I'm putting a score bot on there. I'm putting graphics over there. I want an archive that doesn't have that. Um, one of the easiest ways to do that is to restream. Um, the, you're essentially – two ways I can think of to do it right off is restream, meaning you send a – um clean feed to your to one provider and then you use a second provider to add graphics over the top um the second is you're you're just splitting it before you encode it and you're encoding two streams um yeah no super easy way to do it but yeah. uh but it's definitely a question we get um, okay. Are there any other factors that people need to consider? You talked already about restreaming service. Um, what about like, I, this is a touchy topic, but monetization of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you and I have talked a little bit about this. Um, when you say touchy topic, it's not super <laughs> touchy, but, um, yeah, um, that is a consideration and that's one of the, another advantages of kind of the sports specific providers that we've mentioned, um, a lot of them provide a way for you to charge fans to view the stream. Um, personally, this isn't a ScoreVision official uh, position by any means. Personally, I don't love that. Um, I went to public school. Not everybody can afford everything. I don't love charging extra for the privilege of being able to watch it off off-site. Also, yeah, just – nightmare of managing payment from a customer perspective if you're looking at your fans as customers which really they are at that point right um i don't i don't love it at score vision so this is where it becomes more of an official thing although we we're still open to working with whoever um we talk a lot about monetizing the stream through advertising so you've already sold advertising on your led scoreboard Go through and sell the rights at an extra cost to 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 show up on the stream. So. That is honestly a great idea, and I think that a lot of our schools would benefit from that. I was just on a call earlier before I got on to record today, um, and that was one of the topics that actually came up in our conversation. Just because they were, we were talking about, yeah, there's a big advantage to having your in display, but you know, I'm a parent and I'm traveling and I'm on the road. Like you kind of do have to have live streaming at this point as a high school. And if you're not, it's definitely um, disengaging your fan base across like the broader perspective. 
Um, yeah. And I think adding advertisement into that just makes it kind of a no-brainer brainer for the school because then they're already getting to develop those relationships further. So right. makes a lot of sense. Um, okay, is there anything else that we should cover? I know this is kind of a short episode, but um, live streaming is such a heavy topic. There's so many different avenues. Yeah, I think I think maybe we do need to talk about uh, and get some feedback on what else we could talk about around this. I mean, you and I were talking ahead of this, trying to keep it focused because it is so huge. We could talk about score bugs, score bug graphics is a huge topic. Um, we get a, a lot of questions around that, not only generating the graphics, but how do you get data for the graphics out of whatever scoring system you're using? Right. Um, and there's some, some system specific answers and some universal answers and they all have different costs, pros and cons. So we could definitely try and dive into that. And then there's just the uh, camera, the video side of it, um, video switching, uh, the encoding, whether you're using encoding software. <laughs> there's the, so many yeah, different. Yeah. I mean, it, these days over the last, uh, you know, 10 years ago, I probably couldn't have said this, but the switching, whether that switching is in hardware with a with some sort of control panel or in software now, because that's been the big trend over the last five years. So Yeah. yeah. The only other thing that may be real fast is I will just put in kind of like a quick plug for our our products in general and what we do offer. So there is live streaming through our SV Capture app. Um, and so that is an option for a lot of schools hardware perspective wise. Um, and that does go to our fan app. And it also can be going back to the board, correct? If you go to live cam mode. Yeah, there's a couple different, fu there's there's some different functionality built in there. I wouldn't refer to the live cam back to the board as being really live streaming. Right. Um, it's using some of the AV hardware in our rack to get you a live feed up up on the board from an iPad or an yeah. iPhone. But then the live um, streaming aspect goes to the fan app. Yes. And I mentioned a very minimally the SV cloud stream that we're talking about coming out. Um, the cool functionality that we're going to integrate there is obviously it will know when you have a game scheduled. And if you want to record the live stream to that, it will let you just do a one button configuration to live stream to that game. Um, it'll automatically link it into the fan app for you. Yeah. And then as far as any other inputs besides SV Capture, maybe just real fast, like is there a way or should we just have them call in to us and ask questions if they're looking for input sources and what that looks like from a video perspective? Yeah, I think that's the, the best option because everybody's use case is a little, a little bit, bit different. different. That's yeah. why, like we said, even talking about cameras and stuff like it's that hard. becomes a huge topic really quick. So, Well, you can always contact ScoreVision if you do have questions. Our sales reps also will direct you over to any other additional resources that they have um, as far as getting any information on video. Um, but for now, I think what we'll do is if you have any additional questions, if you want to hear more about the graphics or you have something specific that you're looking at, you can leave a comment below on this podcast episode, and we will try our best to answer them in later episodes. Thank you for joining us today, Ben. Thanks, Ethel.